Are you looking for an affordable keyboard for your iPad here behind me? I got two of them. Let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to my channel. So today's a little bit different again. I do product reviews sometimes and that's what this is. So what I do, I have two different keyboards and I, they're at two different price points but they're both inexpensive. That's what I'd say, inexpensive keyboards. The first one's gonna be the O-Motion. Omotin. I keep saying that wrong. Omotin. All right, right here. It's a very thin keyboard. It's made out of plastic. Um, it's basically going to be the KB505. I'll have a model number. I'll have links in the description to it as well in the video description to Amazon. This one I actually recommend. I get a lot of different keyboards. If you want a very cheap keyboard, it's Bluetooth enabled. I'll, I'll go through close-ups and specs of this in a second to show you what it's all about. And I'll have additional information for you. It's very easy to pair pairs in two seconds with my iPad behind me. And uh, it, you know the type, you know, typing on it's actually really nice and I'll review it in a second. So this is the, Omo, the Omotin and it's basically only about $19. So if you're looking for a very inexpensive keyboard that just works, it's got, you know, the keys seem like they're good on the fingers. You know, they're not, obviously it's a small keyboard. It's not gonna be perfect, but you can type pretty easily, at least I can. I like this one for $19, you can't go wrong. This is the Omotin. All right, the second one that I want to talk about is right here. This one's got a couple little secrets. This is actually going to be the Jellycomb, and it's a, it's a specific keyboard. I'll have the model number here again also and a link in the description. But this one actually is about $35, so you're roughly going to be a little bit less than, you know, double the other one. But this one's got two secrets built in, and we're going to show you close-ups and all this, and I'll give you the specs, how long this lasts and everything. But realistically, the two little hidden secrets is number one, it's got a uh, pad here, uh, you know, as far as just a touch pad where you can actually use the mouse and I'll show you how that works. But you can actually scroll around just like a mouse on your iPad, which is kind of cool. It has to be, I believe, 13.0 iOS or up. But um, so I'll, I'll have the stats on that as well, but it works really well. The other thing that's a kind of a secret here is watch this. If you're traveling, this keyboard, it folds into a little teeny square, see that? So we'll show you that up close too. This is the Jelly Comb, crazy name, but that's what it's called. So let's get into the video. I'll show you close ups, some specs, some stuff like that, and then I'll wrap it up with my overall impressions of them at the end. Kind of cool, huh? I mean, it's at least a conversation piece. Um, pretty good too. All right, the first keyboard is the Omotin. It's, it says wireless KB505, but it's actually Bluetooth enabled. And uh, you can see the technical specs. I'll get into those in a second. The keyboard itself comes just with the keyboard. It comes with the directions, which are very, very simple, easy to set up. And it also comes with a USB-A to, to micro USB cable for charging and things like that. So, you know, all the pieces you need. In the upper right-hand corner, you do have a connect button for Bluetooth and an on and off switch. And then a caps, you know, charge and a power a lights, just typical standard stuff on any keyboard. When you're actually charging it, you know, you do get a, a little light that lights up there and it goes away when it's fully charged. So we'll get into how long that takes and stuff in a second. Second. Overall, the keyboard's very standard for the Mac. It has the FN control option and command on the left hand side, and the size is pretty good. So it's got, you know, that's pretty common there. And then on the right hand side, there's a little on and off switch for the backlight of the keyboard. It is backlit. And then it's got the RGB, which actually, you know, will have a bunch of different colors you can actually uh, put on the keyboard. I'll show you here in a second. So it does come with, a, I think, seven total colors white, purple, you know, blue, and then I'll show you red here at the end. But realistically, you can change it by any color you want, but it doesn't, it does hurt the battery quite a bit, and we'll get into that in a second if you wanna go ahead and do the backlighting. Overall, though, it's a super thin keyboard. I highly recommend it. It's not super expensive. It's, it's not made out of aluminum, but it's pretty good overall. All right, here are the specs for this, and the ones that are very important here, it has Bluetooth 3.0, which is an older Bluetooth, but it works really well. It's got about a 10 meter range. The big difference here, though, is the battery. So it takes about four hours to charge, and you get 40 hours without the backlight on it, but you only get three with the backlight. So definitely only use the backlight if you need to use it. Um, here it is, obviously, the main difference is how does it work with the iPad? Is it a good experience or is it a bad experience? So let's go ahead and test that out. So that's what I did. I went ahead and I typed on it for a while. The experience is really good. The keys are very nice. They're not nearly as good as my, you know, my iMac $100 keyboard. You know, they're, they're flat sometimes, but they work really good. The spacing's good. So I could type really fast on this. And I overall, you know, I totally recommend this for an under $20 keyboard for sure. 
All right, the next one is by Jellycomb, and this is more of an ex more expensive. It's around $36, so you get a lot more with this one. Comes in a little fancier box, but that doesn't really matter at all. So overall, you get these kind of hidden features that are, this is the reason you'd buy the keyboard. I'm gonna show you what those are. So in the box, it's kind of cool. You take it out and you get the user manual, you get the, the power plug there, and then you also get the, the keyboard, which looks very small when it's folded up. And uh, let's go ahead and show you what I mean. So when you get it, you can see how small it is compared to my hand. And then you can go ahead and just unfold it very easy like this. So what this is great for is it, you know, travel for sure. And it does come with, you don't need a mouse. It does work with an iPad also. On the right hand side, you see the trackpad. We'll get into that in a second. Overall though, the weight and everything is very good. If you look at the overall keyboard, you'll see on the left hand side, it only has the FN control and command key. And then way on the right hand side over there, there is the option key as well. So it works very well with the Mac, just in a different configuration. And uh, overall, you can see again up close here, it's got the FN control command there, but it's got that big line going down the middle and the, and the split keyboard, you can see it here. And then on the right, you got the command option. So the problem with typing on it is you have to get used to that split and the T key up there, see it, is very small and so is the delete key. Everything else is fairly easy, but after some time I got used to it, it worked a lot better. And then here's the actual, you can set up two different devices. This is the trackpad, it works really well. It has the left and right button. And uh, overall, I can't complain with it. On the side, it has an on and off switch. You can see it here. And then that button is the Bluetooth button, so you can sync it with your Bluetooth. And then it has a charging cable like the other device. And again, light turns on when it's charging, turns off when it's fully charged. So overall, very easy to use, easy to set up. Out of all these stats here, I want to show you, it's got a 10 meters uh, range. The big thing here is it's got 40 hours of use here, but only 17 hours of use if you're continually using the touchpad. So just keep that in mind. And that lowers the battery time as well. And uh, not as bad as the other one, though. So here it is. So what? how does this work? Let's go ahead and let me give you my review of it. Overall, the typing experience was a little worse than the other one, the cheaper one, but when I got used to it, it actually was very good. The quality of the, the, the keyboard is a lot better. It's a lot better plastic and everything else, and the trackpad works incredibly well, so it's a really good device if that's what you want. Let me go ahead and show you. So if you're on your iPad like this, you can go ahead and set this up. A lot of people don't even know this, but see the trackpad there, and then a mouse will come up. You have to be, I think, iOS 13 or higher, but you can go ahead and click on different things on your iPad, and it just works almost like a real computer here because you don't have to worry about, you know, you have a, a mouse, you can, you know, click on different options and everything. So I love it. And overall, it's just a great device. So go ahead and check it out. It's 35 bucks. You can always return it as well. All right, let's wrap this up. So what, what's my overall impressions? Again, the Omoten cheap, $19, a little bit plasticky, but it doesn't feel too bad. Very easy to type on, very natural. It's close to my iMac keyboard. Granted, it's way lower than that, obviously. As far as the, the keys, the keys are gonna be a little bit softer, all that stuff, but for $19, it is just easy to key layout to type on. You don't, have, you don't run a lot of issues. You got the backlighting. Um, you got a lot of hours if you don't use the backlighting, but you have different color backlighting. Again, very easy to pair on my device, took two seconds. No problems with it, and very little lag at all, so you can type really well. Cheap, throw it in your bag, $19. The second one, $35, is a little bit more of a, I guess, an impulse buy, but you know, it does have, obviously, the touchpad, which you can actually maneuver around your iPad, and uh, you know, on the newer iOS versions, that works. It's really cool, so check that out. You don't have to actually have a mouse. You can just take this keyboard with you. This keyboard also lasts a long time. It's, it's higher quality plastic. The only problem is these, where it folds, and again, the fold is a huge thing, see that? It can fold up tiny into a little backpack. But the issue with the fold, again, kind of I talked about it before, is there's the keys here and your fingers go here, and it's just a little bit harder to type on. I had a, a little bit of getting used to with it, but after you get used to it, it's actually not that bad. And if you're just in a bind and you want to take this with you in a trip or something, it's way faster than kind of poking on the thing, you know, on, a, on an iPad behind me. So this is not a bad solution. It's just not going to be as fluid because of this cut here. You know, your fingers have to, you know, sometimes, the, and, and plus the, the keys up here are a little bit smaller, like the delete key and stuff. So there's a little bit difference here. But beyond that, I think, Overall, it's a great keyboard too. So I do recommend both of these keyboards. You know, if you want to either go with the Omoten or the Jellycomb, they're great, great selections for 35 bucks or $19. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you guys tried these? Are you going to try them? Do you need a keyboard? What are some other good keyboards you've tried out there? We'll go ahead and add them up, and then we'll go ahead and just uh, see if we can make another video one day. So just wanted to say thanks again for watching. And if you guys can support the channel, just trying to get some products out there. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.